Oh, I don't even open up my, um, what do you call it? Anyway, hello everyone. This is uh, Scratch and Jack, your um, host for Across the Pond, I'm Raising Plastics Across the Pond Hangout. My picture just went away. There it is. Uh, and today we're going to be talking scale models with our members and followers of Amazing Plastic who like to share their tips and tricks with one another and revel in one another's scale modeling achievements. Uh, today we have joining us in the Bear North, Aries, how are you doing? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so so what, what are you working on, sir? Well... <laughs> it's 48 hour build time again. It started up, and I'm working on a 2009 Corvette CR1. Ooh, nice. I like the colors that you did. Those, those, is that already painted? Yeah. Well, sort of. Nice. It's, got the, uh, it's two tone uh, metallic orange and a very, very dark metallic blue. Uh huh. And then uh, that's about it. I got a uh, fire truck on the way, but I can't show that because it's going to be a big surprise. Oh, cool. Nice. Uh, and also, um, tell us more about these 48-hour bills that they go on, typically around this time of year. Well, yeah, they go on most of the year. We're, you know, it's a growing pain over the last year or so. So we're going to do it every, once a month. Usually this is the last Saturday of the month. And you pick a car. You start at five or sorry, eight o'clock on a Friday. Finish eight o'clock on a Sunday. Uh, that would be eight o'clock in the morning or evening on Easter. Uh, eight p.m. wherever you are. Oh, okay. Oh, so okay. Well, Australia, you, as long as it's eight p.m., you can start on Friday. Nice. Uh, so you're not allowed to touch the kit until eight p.m. your time. You can wash it. And I believe this year, actually, we're allowed to take start taking off flash. Like sand oh, off. we've been taking off flash. Wow. Okay, that's a big move because in your... Some community. guys seem to want to build AMT kits, and they're, they're an older mold, so yeah. they have a lot of flash. Uh-huh. But that's, that's really, uh, that really propels you forward by taking off flash. Yeah. <laughs> I would figure that you know if you were painting, uh, prime them and then uh, be prepared that way. But I guess not. You gotta spend time priming then, huh? Yeah, you, you that can't. sucks. Yeah. <laughs> so use acrylics. <laughs> right, right, right. So next up we have uh, James, and James uh, saved a tree today. And he's building yeah. <laughs> metal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm still working on my uh, all metal tank here. Uh huh. That's, that is so cool. The detail is amazing. And we were saying earlier um, about how to how to bend it. Yeah, yeah. You, you have to use if you. You need a couple of good, good pliers for for bending this metal. This little, the metal's thicker than normal uh, photo etch. Show us the plier. Yeah, just pliers. Yeah, show us. But but uh, you know, one, but you want ones without serrated. You want them to be flat, no no serration on them, so you don't mark up the uh, the surface. I see. Uh, I'm looking at my pliers here, and there is serrated edges on there. Well, uh, this, this, these were—I think these were bought at uh, Harbor Freight. Yeah, mine are uh, ones I got at an electronic supply store, but they're, uh, yeah, they're just, uh, but they're good for this because they're, they have no serrations. Right. right. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So you nip at it, bending it little by little, I suppose, huh? Oh, yeah. Okay, cool, cool. How you doing, uh, Phil? It's been a while. I'm good, I'm good. Just working on Red 5 at the moment. Red 5, was that uh, Luke's uh, X-Wing? Yeah. And are you lighting it like I attempted to do? <laughs> no, I, I was going to. I'd actually planned to. And when I sat down to do it, I said, you know, 
I never turn the lights on these models on. So <laughs> I think for this one, I'm just going to build it. Oh, OK. Yeah. I guess that's how mine turned out. I haven't really finished it, but so you, you've got an unlit one as well. <laughs> uh, uh, a lit, unlit one, yes. A wired one that's unlit, yes, yes. So, uh, I should finish it. I mean, it's a. I think it's a nice kit, honestly. You know? Not bad. The only thing that I, I meant to be ask you about is stupid holes in the wings. What on earth are they for? I filled them. They made no sense uh, to me. Holes? Are you talking about the corresponding pin that it go the pin goes into? Yeah, but on each side, there's also like a you know the, that hole. You know, the, the, there's cutouts, and they right, they, right. They, uh, the the corresponding open. pin. Yeah, the corresponding pin goes into them to keep the wings shut. If you wanted to keep the wings shut. Yeah, that's on one hole, but each side has two holes. Oh, really? Yeah, I filled them because it didn't serve any useful purpose. I thought there is no way this thing will fly with those bloody holes in it. Well, it's not going to fly anyway. No, I know, but it just didn't make <laughs> sense. So I, it. I grabbed the Bondo and said, "Go on." <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I hear you. But, uh, um, so you just left yours open. I'm. No, actually, I have it closed. Well, it's sitting on the shelf behind me. I have it closed. Um, you can probably see it more close enough in my picture. See, I have the mine closed. Oh, yeah. yeah well, I'm, lo I'm locking mine in the open position. So. Well... Well, you know, since, well, I can't really do anything about it because the landing gear assembly is in a plate that now I have covered because this was going to be in flight mode. Exactly. Um, yeah, I might have to pull it apart to put in the, um, the landing gear because quite, well, the top, the front end, uh, it's still like an empty recess. Uh -huh. So since I, I'm not being able to light this, I mean, yeah, I might as well uh, have a display model on a land, landing gear on it. So yeah, you gave me you gave me the thought to do that. Excellent. Uh, maybe I'll maybe I'll finish it off and not you know not put it in a graveyard. Okay. Glad to help. <laughs> next up we have uh, <laughs> next up we have Randall. How you doing, Randall? Hi, Jack. Not too bad. How's everybody? Good, thank you. What's up? Uh, just still tinkering away with uh, good old Thunderbird 2 and uh, finally got the uh, the pod put together. Oops, just <laughs> Yep, and... Uh, oh, look at that. Inside, you can see there. Oh, look at that, yes. It looks like real. It looks real. Need some elevator cars to go in there. <laughs> wow. <laughs> nice. Uh huh. And let's see the other side of, that, of those lights there. The other side of the lights? Yeah. Well, is it there lights in there? Yep. There's uh, just one, one strip of. Um, oh, hang on. We're closed. Oh, you mean LED tape? Oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh, okay. That looks good. That looks real good. We're uh, one for warm white that would uh, replicate the incandescent bulbs that they used in the original. Oh right, right, right. You know they do they do imitate incandescent light very well. Mm -hmm. Oh, that looks really, really nice in there. I, I think I should uh, worship uh, your model gods. Uh, they are helping you quite a bit. <laughs> nice. Mind you, the, the amount of abuse this thing has received over the last. Uh, Couple of months, I'm I'm vaguely surprised. Anything worked at all? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, but the only thing I didn't do with it was uh, stand on it. Uh -huh. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a yet on that one. <laughs> Next up, uh, we have uh, Spike. How you doing, Spike? Oh, not bad, mate. So what's uh, what's I on your bench? I have not been doing anything at all. Not a thing. <laughs> no. Oh man, uh, too busy with schoolwork. I brought. I, oh, with school, I, yeah. I purchased some more kits. 
I seem to be buying a lot lately, but I don't seem to be building any of it. Uh-huh. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, your schoolwork is, uh, I just, uh, I got to keep reminding myself, you know, I did the same thing too. Well, I'm not, I wasn't as old as you, but I was pretty much intra, uh, traditional when I got to my uh, four-year program in university. Um, the, the kids, as I call them, or my academic peers, as I was being polite, um, some of them looked at me as a peer. Others looked at me as threatening because I was uh, my their parents' age. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I don't know if you are uh, in that bucket with uh, a lot of young kids. Oh, yeah, there's a couple of young blokes um, in with us sort of thing, but... Uh, they they know everything. So just ask them, they'll tell you. Of course, <laughs> that's the privilege of being young, knowing everything. <laughs> mm, apparently so. Uh, yeah. well, I, so I keep telling them, wait till you get out in the real world and see what happens there. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Um, so, uh, can you show a kit that you had purchased? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I got two of those. Um, oh, wow. oh, those are great. That looks fun. Oh, yeah. Is that kind of, is that kind of a racer uh, that killed that one guy uh, recently? Um, I don't know what you're talking about, Jack. Well, oh, gosh. It's must have been a United States thing. Um, no, so, Jack. What? You're thinking sprint, sprint cars? Yes. Oh no 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 no! Sorry no I yeah, it's all right. I know what he's talking about now. No, this this is a drag car and it's called an altered. Oh okay, that's what it's called. It's altered. It's a short wheelbase with a blown motor in it. So it's just a uh, if it were in real, as if it were one to one scale, the real yeah. thing. Uh, it's basically a show car. It, no. No? This is a real car. It is a real race car, a real drag racing car. Oh, a drag racing car. Okay, see? Yeah. I'm getting yeah. an education. <laughs> yeah. But that's the thing about this kit. This kit is an actual car that ran oh, okay. uh, in the early 60s. Okay. And uh, they re-released this a while ago. And the silly part about it is there's two versions of this. You can get one at CMPC. Oh. And the other one's AMT, but it's the same kit. It, uh, yeah. Uh, I think AMT had bought uh, bought the other company, yeah. But uh, the difference between the two boxes, too, uh, the MPC kit uh, must have had the rights to use the actual photo of the real car, and AMT didn't because that's just a, like a cartoon or a... Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, picture of the model being built sort of thing, that's all. But, yeah, anyway. but I've got two of those, and the reason why I brought two of those is I've got two bodies coming from Jimmy Flintstone, and I'm going to be changing the bodywork on these, so there won't be that body on it. Yeah, I'll, I'll be looking forward to that. So when is uh, your break? Do you have any break, like a summer vacation? Well, summer for you oh, now. Hopefully, hopefully in the next couple of weeks they're going to back off with the homework and that. And if they do, I can get back to doing some work on me models. Cool. Cool. Uh, hopefully, yeah, we'll wait and see what happens. Oh, I'm really looking forward to seeing that. Hi, Bob. Hey, you guys started early this morning. <laughs> uh, a little early, yes, uh, by maybe 10 minutes, because we were sitting here picking our noses, and it wasn't pretty. So <laughs> <laughs> We got our noses like, finished, well, and we're about to pick something else. I woke up early, <laughs> forgot to be on time, and I was late. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. It's, uh, it keeps you fresh and young uh, with these surprises, I suppose. Well, yeah. What are you doing? What are you doing on your bench? Uh, I just finished at the Kano. Let me uh, throw up a screen share picture for you. Okay. The 172nd air pitch kit that I uh, did for the uh, as a Reno racer. Oh. Nice. That looks nice. Did it actually fly in those markings, or is it... Uh... No, I just made it up. Really? Yeah, pretty cool. Started laying tape on there and let, let the tape fall where it, where it wanted, and mm -hmm. and then painted it. 
Ooh, that's cool. I think the RAF should enter the Reno races. <laughs> <laughs> that actually looks real. I, I, you know, uh, somehow it looks like it's uh, it has British and French markings on it. I don't know. But I just, guy. That is so cool. That looked bigger than in their pictures than you are showing there. That's, yeah. That's why I did the screen share because it'd be so hard to see it. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. Cool. Yeah, finished that last night or early this morning, I guess you would call it. Yeah. I got the video put up. And uh, that's where I was working on. Nice. Uh, Started anything for a couple of days again. Mm -hmm. uh, so what is next? What next for you? Uh, a couple of little builds. Uh, I'm going to do start that Atomic Dog appreciation build. A couple of days. Mm -hmm. uh, I need to get the Colonial Viper going, and then I've got the Hasbro Falcon. I got to get going. And mm -hmm. as soon as I can get my table bought, I got the Constitution. I'm gonna get started on. Uh huh. Okay. So I got right. a full play coming up. Uh huh. It almost seems like I'm saving the best for last when I'm talking to you, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> I think you need, you need a brain examination if that's okay. <laughs> it's like when I get an assorted chocolate box of chocolates, I eat all the creams first so I can get to the nuts. <laughs> oh, that's, that's much more appropriate, yes. <laughs> that's more appropriate. Yeah. Hello, everyone. How are you all doing? Good. Is, it, Good. Is, is my picture squished? Am I squished? Yeah, you're, those, you're looking like a short uh, a cherub Irishman there, yes. <laughs> oh, I don't know why. It's just, just decided to uh, misbehave this camera today. This is this is a, a different webcam I'm using, which is much better quality, but um, I don't know why it's insisting on squishing me. Um, well, it's just squishing I, you. As you can see. Yeah. It's squishing you, but not the room you're in. That's the weird part. <laughs> As you can see, I'm in I'm in the garage with yes, a scarf are. and a coat. <laughs> Due to the inclement weather conditions, which is why I'm not doing as much modeling as I would like, because every time I come out here, I end up with, uh, as you were saying earlier on, needing to blow my nose due to little drips coming from the end of it. And I don't think between the drips and the glue. So um, I'm, I'm working on that. No, no. It might be a, a glue enhancer. Who knows? Uh. <laughs> It's, it'll, uh, it'll uh, what do you call it for the um, super glue, the uh, accelerator, yeah. Um, <laughs> trying to, we're working on this uh, for a change, not you say, pay for a change, little uh, measure map. It's an ancient Revell kit from the 70s. Uh, oh, really? MD 109, one, 148 scale, which has worked out, ah. you know, it's a nice kit. It's, um, you can see, see by the box art, sort of the, 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 the edge of it. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. So it is an old one. But um, surprisingly enough, it had uh, it didn't have raised panel lines. So if we were uh, working at that, and uh, you know, again, time as always, I always complain about the same subject. But uh, it's it's a nice little airplane, um, almost to the stage of starting to put the decals on, and then the uh, uh, a gloss coat and sorry, gloss coat then the decals, and then do the weathering So I'm hoping it turns out okay. Um, probably probably get back to my Star Destroyer then if, if I can get the place a little bit warmer. Uh -huh. um, and then as a, a John Petrie has a bill coming up um, uh, Enterprises or an Enterprise, so I'm doing a one five three seventh uh -huh. scale Enterprise for that I think. Uh, uh -huh. But uh, but you know, plenty of plans for the for the spring. Oh, me too. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking about doing an entire year of just about a lot of Star Wars anticipation of the new movie. I mean, I have the 72 scale uh, Falcon that I want to do in flight mode, um, and I want to do that diorama of the scene in the first movie because when I was, I guess I was about 12 or 13 when I first saw the movie, and I can't say I've ever been as thrilled in a movie uh, since that scene. So to me, it's very nostalgic. You yeah, know? It, the only thing that competes for me would be the uh, the motion picture, Star Trek motion picture with the Enterprise reveal. That's you know that that equates probably to the the that that first scene in scene in Star Wars four where you see the ship coming across the top of the screen and then right that 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 still sort of knocks your socks off. That I, I saw that in a 
uh, a theatre in London, which was one of the old style cinemas, which was you know crazy, sixteen hundred seats and um, mm -hmm. massive screen and so on, and it just was so impressive at the time. But yeah, um, it's funny enough, I, I've been doing a few Star Wars things myself between the Star Destroyer, and I bought a few more kits that maybe I'll have a look at this year. But and of course the Hasbro, the Falcon, I'll probably get back to the to that as well, like Bob. But we'll see. That's uh, plen plenty of things to do, and as always, the stash is not reducing. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm the same way. The stash is never reducing. <laughs> never reduces. Never reduces yet. If anything, it gets bigger. Like, like waistlines, it keeps getting larger. Yes. Did you have stage where you, you stop and think, when did I stop being a model builder and became a model collector? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No problem, Randall. Definitely. Uh, the only other thing I got was uh, I got this as a, as a birthday present. Oh wow. Uh, the little Tamiya uh, drill kit uh -huh. um, for doing windows, and I mean that's that, that's just so handy. Um, uh -huh. The drill is slow enough that you can get away with. It. What only thing only thing I was fault in it was the uh, the minimum size of the uh, the drills. I'm going to have to come up with some way of reducing the size of this. So it'll take a smaller drill, but um, but for doing the uh, Voyager or any of the Starship builds, it just zzz, 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 yep. just rattled through it. Um, mm -hmm. I, I posted I posted something this morning. I don't know if you saw it, uh, a thing about adapting an X-Acto blade into a, a a window cutter. I did. I didn't read the whole thing, but I saw the concept. It's actually it's a it's a girl um, Jennifer Jennifer. Oh, I can't think of her surname now. Uh, who I came across, and she's done quite a bit of stuff, and she comes up with these ideas for things which are just unique. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, she's lots of other stuff that she's done, but she seems to have a very Mixed sort of uh, set of interests, but certainly the modeling side of it, she seems to be very good at it. And uh, so I'm going to have a go at uh, doing a couple of uh, window blades or whatever the correct term would be for them, because it seems to help. She even had a thing of, of using a paper clip and uh, rasping this each side of the paper clip, so it acts as a very small uh, tile. Oh. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Some simple little ideas that uh, it's a, a, very like the sort of stuff that Jay comes up with. Oh yeah, yeah, right, yeah, I, yeah. Jay does come up with uh, kind of unusual ideas. I, I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Say about that. Just, <laughs> I've just noticed we're missing we're missing our other Australian friend today. What's oh Heath? yes, yes. I talked that's, to that's him last first. night. Yeah, I talked to Heath last night. He says, oh, it's too late for him and us uh, for him to be on this show. So we'll see him tomorrow on a Sunday hangout, and you won't be around because it'll be late for you. So yeah, it seems yeah, to be man. pretty North American-centric, don't you think? <laughs> well, <laughs> as, as, as we most think. What, what was that, Spike? I said, make sure he turns up the marathon, not to go to church. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's a church goer. He is. You know he is. Uh, he did. Yeah. So uh, maybe that's what it is. He's uh, falling asleep during a sermon. But then again, that's what <laughs> sermons are for, falling asleep on. So, you yeah, know. For a nap. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, uh, I've got – I'm sorry. Did you – are you – It's okay. It's okay. okay. Uh, so what I'm uh, working on myself, of course, a, a week of mandatory overtime didn't get me in a bench. I'm going to finish off my um, – Street burner Nova, uh, my Nova Yanko. So I'm 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 getting pretty good at this thing. Um, here's the underside, undercarriage. Go we'll get go. a focus, focus, focus. There we go. Look at the genius paint on the uh, on the uh, mufflers. And got the interior. The interior's all done. Mm -hmm. oh, nice. So now I got to paint the body, and then get working on my Corsair, uh, my Rebel Corsair. I got that prime too. I don't even know where it is. What a the helicopter! It's hanging around somewhere. Yeah, it is. So um, yeah, I want to I want to get some of these out of the way uh, because I really want to you know get those. Uh, I got. Three things: the Millennium Falcon, the X-wing. Try it again, and uh, lighting it and everything. And then, of course, the trench scene. So I got, I'll get this done just before December. So that is a good 
goal to have. I'll probably start the Falcon in in uh, in, the, in the summer. So, yeah, I'm I'm not sure what's going to be next after this. That's where I am. Anyway, does anybody have any news about uh, the hobby? Uh, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> and I only say that because I want to start a screen share. Of course, here's my camera not being very cooperative. I look like I'm I have hay fever or something. <laughs> well, everybody probably knows by now that the dragonfly is shipping. A so dragon. People have got the dragonfly. Okay. Johnny sleep. Quest. Yeah. Uh, like Johnny Quest over the side of the uh, Atlantic. Oh, that's a doctor. Oh, that's just amazing. That's a solid build. Oh, yeah. It's well, so realistic. Uh, it's just unbelievably realistic. This, mm-hmm. yes, I, I, this is I'm uh, picking up from when we last uh, talked. Um, scale models usually show, and this is a test terrain. Are you kidding me? Yes. <laughs> this is not test. This is like the actual thing. I mean, really. Mm. Yeah. Um, very cool work. Uh, let's see if I can zoom in on this cabin here. That's the test. What's the final product going to be like? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, um, I don't know. Uh, th- this is just amazing. Test terrain. I don't know. That's no test terrain to me. That's a real thing. <laughs> hey, if, he's, if that's his test and he's done with it, can I have it? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to, you know, honestly, um, I really feel, though, sometimes um, I like some of these people on the show just because. I mean, this is the test. I mean, seriously. And see how they really do this stuff. And, of course, you can re- use real material to get these uh, terrains done. You don't even have to do anything special. Um, next up, uh, you, have, you know, uh, Don Gilchrist is very prolific in his uh, posting. And he I, was has hoping, to think, I was hoping he would have been here today, Jack, because he was asking about how to get on and so on. Uh-huh. Uh, well, such things as this, um, I thought this was actually pretty cute. And people who aren't to sci-fi, I think, would agree this is cute. Oh, yeah, that was cool, wasn't it? <laughs> rocking the, oh, the rocking horse, yeah. Uh, the rocking horse, uh, it's the rocking X-Wing. like it. Yeah. It's pretty clever. Yes? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <Love that. laughs> I think that? it was John, John Patry who posted a, a, one of the, uh, somebody that was uh, building a, like a, a, a bunk bed, but it was a <laughs> Yeah. Uh, next, uh, this gentleman, uh, Mr. Dom, Alex Dom. This is his Fuchs ambulance. He is so good. That's one seventy seconds kill, eh? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. <laughs> Oh, that, yeah, he did a real nice job on that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, there was another picture here, too. Wow, okay. Uh, the back side of this uh, thing. Good. Good stuff. <coughs> Good stuff. Now, um... I, I'm kind of thinking here that, you know, with the terrain that he's got uh, put together, he's got a lot of dust and whatever, dirt. Uh, you can use that on your models to make it look dirty, right? Of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yep. See, he, this is one gentleman I'd like to see on a show and really uh, talk to him and uh, how he come up with this. Is this something that he come trial and error, or is this something that he had uh, seen elsewhere? Oh, that's just so cool. I really What's like it. Very terrain? Inspiring. What's that? The terrain is special? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think that's really cool. With, with, the, with the size of the group now at 1,220 members, 
it's still surprising there aren't more that, that, that will come on the Hangouts deck. It's, it's almost as if um, and we, have, we have the core group, which is fantastic. The people here here almost every week. Um, it's a pity there's no way of encouraging a few more, you know, just uh, mm. to pop in now and again either to this one or to the, the Sunday night one because there's just mm. so much talent out there. Mm-hmm. Mm. I don't know what. They're really good car builder too. Okay, here this is what I wanted to find. This is the scale modeler and his terrain, his or her terrain. There we go. Yeah, that's the one with the more yeah with the complete terrain on it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Other species. Look at that. He's got, I mean, got them categorized. <laughs> Different species of moss. Other plant species. Wow. Combine gardening with modeling? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, seriously. The, the tree the tree is just so realistic in that picture. It's just mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're talking about dioramas, Jack. I mean that's something I haven't been tempted to try to do, but again when you see some some of the posts again of especially with uh figures or uh uh, AFEs and so on. It's, it's really a sort of tempting to have a go at something, but. Uh, so Phil, tell us about the uh, Hornet. Are you working on that yet? No, I don't think came uh, Thursday night. So. Oh. I haven't even unboxed it yet. Is it a Japanese kit? Yeah, it's made by Trumpeter for an American company Merit International. So yes, it's it's actually Chinese. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's the same, um, made by the same people who made the Missouri. Yeah, there was. A, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, there was a uh, kit for a concept Linlander from back in the 50s, and they made a model kit of it. And Andrew Robinson has been really, really going about it and making, offering it completely. This is a complete uh, redo of the kit itself. Um, I have to say, his work is uh, very clean. Uh, he does fast work, but I'm told that his scale models are, very, are pretty small. Nonetheless, I mean, what do you guys think? Uh, is it a larger kit? Does it take longer and more detailed work to do, or is a smaller kit more complex? And uh, working with detail would be painstakingly as difficult as maybe a large one. What do you think? Is there a comparison between the two? Sometimes my 172nd scale kits take longer to build than my uh, larger scale kits. But I would agree with that, Ronald. Yeah. I would. I I feel as though for me, uh, smaller the kit is, uh, <laughs> less desire I have to work on detail. <laughs> and that has to do with I don't know what's wrong with me, but my hands shake. So I have to work really diligently to keep my painting uh, at a time when I'm yeah. not I have on the side I am a small little kid I don't like the detail in fact I was watching a TV show the other night the guy was doing dioramas on the top of a pinhead he was <laughs> using a microscope unbelievable absolutely unbelievable why I mean I ask why why on the top of a pinhead because he can <laughs> <laughs> yeah Oh my God! Yeah, you should have seen what he did. It was just amazing what you can do at that size. So, but for me, yeah, if it's smaller than um, a square foot, <laughs> the detail. <laughs> That's right, Phil. I'm waiting for you to get one of those one two hundred scale enterprises, or not an enterprise, sorry, uh, Turpitz or Bismarck or something. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah, like, well, maybe not this. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so I, we have put a tree up because we were dog-sitting, and uh, I was really wanting this to make this my Christmas ornament. So. Aries, you mean this? Yes. Something like that, Aries? Yeah, it's a little one, isn't it? That, that's yeah, that's just a little one. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, it's over a meter long. Yeah. Yep. 1.23, oh, uh, 1,239 millimeters. Oh, my God, look at that box. Well, are, you going to, are you going to do it as a standalone, or will it be a diorama again? <laughs> it's funny you I should met, I met a little bit of sea. I didn't mean Pearl Harbor. 
No, it's it's funny you should mention that because I did the Missouri on a stand, but I did the 132nd PT boat as a diorama. I'm thinking yeah. this could be a diorama. Yeah. It's not yeah. it's, it's, it's not a waterline hull, but that's easy to overcome. The, so I am the, 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 the idea. Yeah, the diorama that I would like to do is uh, where I live here in Derry, London Derry, in Northern Ireland, it was the. Um, where all of the submarines surrendered at the end of World War Two, all the uh, Type Sevens and Type Nines and all the different uh, U-boats all surrendered yeah. here. But this was also the main place for uh, all the corvettes, the flyer class corvettes, which uh, followed the uh, Atlantic. Uh, what do you call it? Convoy. The convoys. Convoys. Yeah. yeah, back and forth. So uh -huh. I mean, there's, there's there's two different ships that I mean I have a 172nd scale Type 7 submarine, and I'm getting a 172nd um, scale Corvette, which I got for very very little money on Gumtree. So you know I'm tempted to do something that way, just as as a, a diorama with those two, but you know something yeah. different. And they are large. I mean the 172nd scale submarine is again about three foot long. So well, yeah, I got one. Sitting. Uh, this I come across Probably this. Building it. I come across this and I'm like, you know what? That's really cool. Yeah. This was on Facebook. I suspect this has been shared before, but just saw this praline bike. It looks like the creature. Um, what is it? Predator. Oh, aliens. It's a crossover. It's a it's a predator alien, which is the, the theory with alien is that whichever species it lays its egg in, it adapts to that species. Oh, okay. So if you oh. if you if a dog as an alien three, the dog had the the egg, so it became an, a dog like alien. I the thought alien. the I thought in the movie Alien versus Predator, the predators uh, genetically created the alien for hunting hunting training purposes. And that's what that was my thinking anyway. That's what I saw in the movie. But yeah, this is definitely a cross between the two because you know you got the right. predator mandibles in the front, and uh, of course the intricate design of what the alien might look like. Hmm. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Wow. I don't know. It looks pretty small though. It might be like a <laughs> like an 80 uh, cc bike. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but, but, but this is this is a model build. Uh, this is certainly a model build. I consider it to be. And uh, what do you think? Would this be like a model build of something, like a scratch build? Mm. Crickets. Okay, I understand. Definitely scratch build. Can't see anybody. Uh. Let's see. Anything else? Strikes uh, something. Oh, what's this? Oh, I haven't seen these in a bit. I just noticed it. Uh, this is a Batman and Robin. Oh, the, the Bat Cycle. Yeah. The bat cycle. <laughs> Yeah, I can't say I've seen this lately. What? Oh, there's a little car here too. Oh, isn't Robin cute? <laughs> <laughs> they may have comments, but they're for opposite camera. Uh, you know, this show is so incredibly campy. <laughs> Every time I see it, Every time I see it, I'm sort of like, um, are they really being serious? Is was this like a really serious production? I mean. I don't know. I think I'd be howling and laughing all through it if I were like one of the characters. You know, I would be like, I can't do this. This is like too. This is ridiculous. I don't it think it's meant to be that serious. <laughs> it was a stupid show for sure. It was very stupid, but it is. It can't help but watching. It's like watching a train wreck happen in slow motion. <laughs> and again, uh, Don uh, Gilchrist is so so interesting. Um, okay, that's not what I wanted to do. He had uh, posted a concept car, it looks like. And it's almost like a Lamborghini. Yeah. Um, yeah, that looks like the Lamborghini Aventador. 
Mm. It is a Lamborghini. Yeah, it looks like a Lamborghini, yeah. Come to think of it, it does. <laughs> Make a very good back car. Speed Vice and Lamborghini. Well, looking at the shape closer, uh, fellas, it looks more like the Mark V from Speed Racer. <laughs> yeah. And you, know what? and you know what? Why not? Why not have it updated like this, huh? Well, that's what it says up there. It says Speed Racer Lamborghini Escascari. Well, I can see some footballer from uh, driving around London with that. <laughs> I've got to know this. <laughs> Never getting it out of first gear. But when I saw this, when I saw this, the first thought I thought was Speed Racer. Honestly, that really was the first thought I had. So, thought I'd share it. All right, what do I have next? You guys seem to be very conversational today. No, well, it's kind of like what I thought about when I saw the La Ferrari the first time. I go, what are those? Stupid things rear view mirrors up so high, and then I realize you can't. I guess you have to see behind you. <laughs> well, you know, there is something that um, I think in model building, we again, like maybe paper models like uh, uh, James makes, there is something mm -hmm. else that I think is sometimes overlooked, and that will be the Gundam style model building. Yeah. Gundam play, yeah. Um, you know, I've seen these at uh, Hobby Time USA, they seem to be pretty popular there. I, I, can somebody explain? Build one of those in an hour. <laughs> What's that? You can build one of those in an hour if you take it right out of the box. Oh, some you can, some you can, some you can't. Depends which one. <laughs> I see. Um, are they pre-painted? If it takes that long, they're in. It, 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 you can build them without painting because they come in pre-colored plastic. In all oh. the different shades, they're already colored. Oh. So no, I, you can build like them that nice. way, or you can paint them too. Yeah, I think this one, this one was all painted. Uh, to me, it looks like it was a colored plastic overlaying the. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's got an interior too. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's uh oh, or is that just flipped over? It looks like it's just flipped over. Yeah. Yeah, it's the inside of the shield. Yeah. Uh huh. Oh wow. <laughs> okay. At least it's the water slide route. There's your uh paint. This is uh interesting. Now uh, using the corrugated cardboard, they're going to mm. back forth to be a holder of um of uh, alligator clips. Yeah. You guys are so creative. Creative. This is like amazing. <laughs> uh, this actually looks like a souped-up version of a Star Trek uh, uh, shuttle. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe uh, Star Trek shuttles were made from guns and bottle kits. <laughs> uh, an arm. Uh, this is really cool stuff. So this probably did not take an hour to do, fellas. No. No, he's redone his. You know, Mark? Aries, do you know Mark? No. I know a lot of Gundam guys, though. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Go figure he with my neighborhood. Posts on a, he posts on a lot of the groups, but he's uh, he doesn't seem to do many hangouts. I know he's been on one of John Petrie's hangouts in the UK. He is a UK builder. Oh, he is a UK builder, isn't he? Okay. All right, boys. Uh, take a look at this workbench. This is not fair. He is very clean. <laughs> I'm a slob. Man, we need two tidies, huh? Yeah, that's pretty much one of those guys. <laughs> yeah, that's just wrong. Yeah. <laughs> My workbench looks like that when I rearrange everything, and then give me about an hour. Oh, wow. He's not going to walk one but two of these guys. Perfect condition, too. Although, I think he has to replace this one. There's a lot of smudge here, right here. Yeah, that was going to go. I think this needs to replace this. Shame on him. How we could, oh, that's embarrassing. He just keeps Needs to be done for the show before publishing. 
geography and all the rest is as messy as uh, everybody else's. Wow, that's cool stuff. That's really cool. I would never build this. No. Why not? I just, I don't know. Uh, well, then again, I said I'd never build a... Um, well, then again, I haven't. <laughs> that would be farmer. <laughs> there's, 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 there's something different to try, you know. Right. It's just another form, you know. Whether right. you decide to paint it or build it out of box as is. Well, you uh, you, so, built, you you built the paper versions of these, haven't you? I built I built a paper mecca, yeah. That uh, my pat labor, my labor that I built last year, yeah. Uh huh. Now that one took quite a while to build. That the labor itself took, I say, seven months to build just the the uh, mecca, but um, on the the gumfla ones, you know, like you're building a frame, you gotta build the frame up, and then you start attaching all the armor and external pieces on top of a frame. So it's rather a different different sort of construction. Uh huh. Well, that that was definitely a plastic. Uh, yeah. Boy, you you showed yours and you had yours in a. Yeah, mine's in a bit of a diorama because it's it's in the it's it's actually parked inside a the maintenance station. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Huh. Well, that we got to Gundam, our our members are really starting to build some scratch builds that are very interesting. Uh, yeah. Skiffington got here. Uh, apparently, these are uh, parts of new ships or something. Um, Reimagine things. Yeah. Well, oh, well, go back, go back, Jack. Yeah. There was something here that was very interesting. Right here, this looks like a bottle cap. Yeah. <laughs> it does. When you're, when you're you're building ships, like you just use everything and anything that you can find. Uh -huh. Bottle caps. Yeah, no caps off of bottles, medicine bottles, whatever you can find, and make it look look like something. Uh huh. See, that does look like something. Mm -hmm. Cool. Cool. That is really cool. Oh, that's all. Wow. So anything. Yeah. Yeah. You can use anything you find in your junk box and uh, start interpreting it into some part when you're building these uh, what if type fantasy ships. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon, Wayne, or good morning, depending. Yeah, hello. I just, just <laughs> it's so dark in your place, and now it's daylight. How are you? Surprised to be here. <laughs> I'm always going to miss it. Well, we've got, what, about 10 minutes, to 15 minutes left, so uh, mm -hmm. uh, we kind of ran out of uh, energy here. We're a bunch of... What do you well, got on your bench? I just finished that. Uh -huh. Nice. And I'll get you what I've just got from the post. You just got what? In the post. In, in the mail. Oh, okay. in the post. Okay. We say mail. Yeah, post. <laughs> okay. Now you're really much into. You're a big time into trains, into locomotives. Yeah. Well. Well, something me and my dad share together. So. That's a big kid. How big is how big is the model itself? Seven hundred and ten pieces. Oh, jeez, that's enough. <laughs> and and no. Wayne will have a sunnish next weekend. <laughs> By tomorrow morning. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, maybe maybe Monday. <laughs> I think it'll take a day to even wash the parts. <laughs> How, how many people actually wash the parts of their models? I do. I did, and I've stopped. I and I think it makes, it makes, makes damn difference, actually, that I can see. But well, you know, 
pretty much the manufacturer. There's so, there some manufacturers use a lot of release agents in their molds, and uh, I remember pulling the old Matchbox kits years ago, and uh, there was no paint stayed on them whatsoever. Of course, back then I didn't wash out of the models. Some of the newer ones, um, I, have, uh, I haven't washed a kit for years. Uh, I know there's some I should do, but with, with good... Um, Good primers, and good primers and stuff like that. They've almost removed the need for it. Mm. Well, the testers uh, kit that I put together, um, and I didn't wash it and I didn't prime it, and I painted it, and this is how it came out. A lot of it looks weathered to me. <laughs> um, on the wings, let's see the yeah, edge like Yeah, right there. You go. Look at that. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you don't wash it, you might get a good effect. And it, apparently, I got lucky on this one. But I just threw this together. I kind of like coughed, and here it was. So. <laughs> I know a lot of people wash them before they even start. I usually wait and wash it the right before I'm getting ready to paint. Because by the time you handle all the parts and sanding and filing and putting and it's all covered with goo and smut anyway. But so usually I'll wash it right before I paint. Yeah, I feel like I watch constantly washing mine because I'll wash it at the beginning, prime, and then wash again. And <coughs> OCD comes into mind, man. <laughs> you know, when you when you build things shiny, you can't have anything on it that's gonna screw up your paint. <laughs> How you doing, Jamie? I'm fine. Thanks for the transport. Ah, very good. I made it over there. Nice. So it was sitting behind me, and now it's sitting in your hands. Great. Good. Yeah. More well, USA to the UK. <laughs> uh huh. Very good. I got that extra. I don't think I was gonna. I don't think I was ever gonna build that. So. I got that extra bit, but it's a bit. It's a bit weird. Look. It's highly inaccurate. Yes. Yes. Mm. I think that is. Uh huh. Right. That's the back end, and it's, there's been aftermarket parts that have. Is that the aftermarket part? That's the aftermarket part. Yeah. Okay. I, what does it look like on the model kit? Oh, if you if you if you imagine that, I, I, I presume it goes in there. Well, you're presuming right, but I want to see. Well, okay, that doesn't look right. Looks no. like you got cut a few things away. Yeah. Uh, maybe it goes like that. Okay, yeah, I think it will. Oh, uh, I don't know. You cut the back off of the off of the kit, and it takes its place. Okay. Yeah, because the back end is sort of like you've got to cut to cut that bit out. It's just plain like that. Yes. Yeah, and this piece will go on to there. Wow, that kit is so incredibly <laughs> good. Right, like thick. Uh -huh. Really, really thick. Uh -huh. Lights are promising us a, a new kit of the shuttle, aren't they? Yeah, they are. I think. I think round two. I, if round two came out with it, I think it would sell very well. I really do. Yeah. A lot of people are saying that a, a Delta Flyer would be better. Mm -hmm. No, original series. Yeah. <laughs> if round two came out with a, a new kit, that'd be amazing just to begin with. Right. <laughs> so a bit of an update for you boys. How about this? I've been working on this, wiring starting off. Well, if you're, you're working on a uh, dinner platter? I don't understand. Oh, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could say that. <laughs> part of the source of the 1350 Enterprise A. I've got the, at the moment, it's, it's, I'm, te I'm starting to wire it all up, but you can see some of the things happening. So that's going to be the impulse engines. Oh, really nice. Okay. And then this, if I can get it close enough, you've got to see inside. It's now fitted. If you can see this. Nice. Oh, cool. Oh, okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah, you got the uh, interiors uh, worked out too. Yeah, uh, and I've got this one in too. Nice. That's the right there. So we're getting there slowly. Mm -hmm.
Could I ask a question, Jack? Sure. Um, for for this particular aircraft, it's supposed to have um, uh, the nose spinner with the the stripe. Now, I, I have managed to do this before by masking it, but uh, has anyone oh. any ideas, any suggestions, any easier way to to mask that so you can do the stripes on it, or is it just doing it by hand? What is it you're masking? It's a, 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 a nose spinner on a Messerschmitt 109. Never look. It's very small, Jamie. So you're talking. It's try, yeah. trying to trying to achieve that effect. Okay, so you want you yeah. So you want to what you're gonna have to use is this. What's uh, that? Yeah, I mean I have the the micro tip. I have some, but um, the problem is because it's because it's not a cylinder, because it's a, a cone that reduces the sizes you go up. You just can't get it to. Here properly. I mean, I've, I've, I've stripped out, I've, I've cut down, and I have very thin. Um, yeah, tape. That's, that's, not, that's not. Liam, Liam, that's no good. You need this stuff. What's that? What difference is that? Or, it's, uh, this, this is like a. Um, it's like vinyl. a vinyl tape. It's a car, yeah. car, yeah. Car, yeah. Car it's, detail tape. It's a vinyl tape. This, right? Oh. And it sticks really, really well. And it goes round corners and everything. I use it all vinyl the time. Work. Vinyl, vinyl would stretch, uh, and paper won't. And uh, I yeah. think uh, Jamie's got yeah. some. Yeah, I'll show you something. Watch. Because because electrical tape is uh, purposeful if it stretches. Are you watching? Yeah, there you go. It stretches to an extent. Right. But yeah. It's very very good if you're doing things like that, Liam. Okay, yeah. I, must, I know. I assume it would be a um, an auto, a car shop, a car paint shop would sell this stuff. No, just get it on eBay. Right. Just for, look for the vinyl, it's about an eight thick tape. Right. Okay. You know, Thanks, it could very well be pinstriping for a car. That's what I'm yeah. thinking, Jack. You see, uh, so that's why yeah, I thought Yeah, but you don't want something with too much glue on it. That's all. Yeah. yeah. You, get, you can get the vinyl tape too from art supply, an art supply store that does has airbrushing supplies. That they'll have that in mm -hmm. stock too. Right. I'll try both. Are you airbrushing okay. it or are you going to do it by hand? Uh, probably airbrushing it, um, Aries. Because if you're doing it by hand, all you do is you put it on a spinner and hold the brush and just come down. Yeah, well, I was thinking that yeah. too earlier, yeah, but if you can get something that moves. That's how we used to do that. I, yeah. I know the, the, the one on the box art looks like it was done by hand. Yeah. So that's what you used to do. You used to yeah. put it so on a spinner. It's an old old kit, but. I'm I'm a perfectionist. I, I I don't want to see any wavy lines. The only one I ever did that way had a, actually came with a decal for the spinner. Yeah. Liam, Liam. Yes, Jimmy. Look at this. This is just I've just put this on a piece of plastic just to show you what it does and how good it is. It's just a normal tube. Yeah. I mean, t t tubes have no problem with I can, I can mask a tube. But the problem with that is that I, that's a cone, it's not a tube. Yeah, what I'm saying is it doesn't matter what shape it is, this stuff will stick to it. Yeah. Well, and I'll, I'll, it'll stretch and go around any shape you want. Yeah. You look, like that's an angle. Yeah. yeah see, he's, he's showing it it's, uh, on an angle. It's not like parallel to each other. Right. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I've actually, I've actually gone around shapes like this with it. Yeah. It's, and it keeps it straight. It's really, really good stuff. Okay. What, would prevent you, what would prevent you from even trying electrical tape and just cutting it narrow? As James said there, the problem may be the glue that would be left behind. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow. Um, I know some people that use that tape for doing, uh, when you're doing masking on a wing as well, when you're trying to mask the, the different colors for the camouflage. Right. You use it to achieve that effect for a hard edge. Um, you do need to be able to... Could you roll out a real thin worm of white tack and do that with that, maybe? True, that's an oil. I hadn't thought that's an oil good idea, Bob, yeah. And I just, just happened to be, be rolling some in my hand at the minute, so. <laughs> yeah, there you um, go. Roll that out on a nice thin okay. worm and use that. Yeah. Hey guys, can I, ask, can I ask you a question? Anybody got any electrical um, knowledge? Especially on um, 
Yeah, yeah, I do. Uh, don't right. stick a paper clip and a wall outlet. <laughs> <laughs> well, what it is, I asked Ralph to do me a um, an alteration to a diagram, but when he sent it back to me, it's not really clear. I'm not quite sure which the negative goes to and which the positive goes to. Maybe you guys can understand it and figure out which is which. It's the red bit. So have a look at that and tell me what you think. Which is the which? Which does the positive go to, and which does the negative go to? Well, you got to follow it back. It still and get it in focus. Yeah, you got to follow it back to your uh, uh, power source. Yeah, it, it it goes onto the board. You see, you got. What I've asked him to do normally at first it was just the, the crystal here, but I wanted the crystal to go blue with the cells. So now he's got a connection going from the board. Oh, tenor controls. Okay. Onto the nacelle, yeah. yeah. But I'm not quite sure which is. Does that? Does the positive go in here and connect to the negative on here? No, no, no. Well, it's it's not. There's not a ground. It's a diode. It's got yeah. a diode and a resistor. So what you've got on your diode, you will have a white or silver stripe. That silver stripe is your forward end. No, no. These are two separate bulbs. You what can't, you mean, two you can't do a, a, a buy one for this one. It's two separate ones because the board is the way the sequence lights up. <laughs> the sequence. What he's done for me is I'm going to have two bulbs in the crystal. One amber, so it lights up when the impulse engines come on. And one blue when the, the cells come on. All right. Right. So what he's done is managed to work out how to do it in, but I can't see. Does the, the live go into the board here? Or does the live go onto this connection on the nacelle here? Well, he hasn't drawn that, has he? No, that's what I mean. That's what I can't. He's just drawn your connection on the circuit, so yeah. you just have to translate that circuit to your board. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what why you're getting confused. Just find that connection on your board and set it up as he's shown you. Mm. Because the, the LED one here doesn't have a resistor. But when the package is sent me with the blue one, it's got a resistor. But it's well, he made the change. Perhaps you should ask him. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to have to get into it. Really. Oh, the wonderful world of electric diodes. Yeah, if you put the diode in backwards, it just pull the light up and have to switch the lead. Yeah. You need, you need to build a few on the models, Jimmy, to get a bit of a rest from it. That's what it is. <laughs> and also about electricity, don't uh, blow dry your hair sitting in a bathtub of water, because uh, look at Harry. Hey. <laughs> Uncle Fester Rowe did this, I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, anyway, kids. Do <laughs> you, you want to do my decals for the interior of my La Ferrari? <laughs> uh, hold that up. Oh, that's a decal Ooh. set for the interior of your Ferrari. Yeah. Holy <laughs> mackerel. <laughs> that looks pretty cool. Looks like a tattoo almost. Um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, kids, it's been uh, a lot of fun, and it's time to say sayonara for another two weeks. We'll be back tomorrow for the Sunday Hangout at 8 p.m. Eastern. And uh, I'd like to thank Aries for joining us. I uh, haven't seen you for a bit. It's the season of 24-hour builds. We'll be looking forward to seeing your builds as well. Thanks. No problem. And, Bob, thanks for showing up. I know we started a little early and I kind of befuddled you as to what's going on. <laughs> but that's okay. You need your sleep. <laughs> and, James, thank you for uh, showing us that a paper guy can do metal. Oh, sure. <laughs> thank you. And uh, there's a tree on the forest somewhere, you know, uh, you know. Yeah. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> And thanks, Jamie, for uh, joining us as well. And Liam, thank you for joining and also sharing too. And uh, get back in the house. You look a little chilled. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Phil, thank you for stopping by too. Okay. And looking forward, to, looking forward to the Hornet uh, build. Uh, you're crazy. I'm you're sure <laughs> <laughs> and Randall, thank you for stopping by as well. And sharing what you have, and also Robert. Uh, yeah, get done with school. Do good grades, and uh, get back to building. That would be great. Good luck with that. Yeah. And thanks, Wayne, for stopping by. Uh, put a comb through there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs>
That's okay. That's why I wear a hat. <laughs> 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 All, right. All right, everyone. This is Scratch and Jack, uh, your host for Amazing Plastics Across the Pond Hangout. Happy modeling, everyone. Be well. Bye now. Bye. Bye. Bye.